I feel like when people say talent at art, they mean it's you're naturally born with it and it's just something you do. Uh, and when they're referring to skill, it's something that you work on and you craft and you improve on. Yeah, I think I think the same thing for for talent. I always hear, oh, you, you know, some, you're something you're born with. You just come out of the womb and you just, as if you had a crayon in your hand the second you're born. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, uh, the idea of skill, I think, it, it can be applied to so many different things. Whether it's you know any artistic practice, obviously, but the idea of just working to get to where you want to go, I think, is so critical to this idea and how to improve as an artist that it's, I think it uh, it's really important to make sure we understand the difference between that. So, mm -hmm. um, so let me ask, do you, do you think natural talent exists in art? Is that even possible? That's, I have a really tough opinion on it where I think a lot of it is on upbringing. Where when I taught like kids at the summer camp who were in like early teens, they were blown away. It's like, wow, you can draw so well. And I'm like, no, when I was like in kindergarten, I couldn't draw any better or worse than anyone else in my class. The difference was that, you know, when my family or my teachers or friends said, hey, you draw really well, I believed them and I kept doing it. Yeah. So I think that it's something that it's based more on how much you respond to positive encouragement as you're growing up. Yeah, I, th I think that's such a big, thing right there is just kids being encouraged to pursue art because mm -hmm. you know what's so interesting is most kids they tend to all draw the same most kids aren't coming out drawing like leonardo da vinci at like in preschool you know they, they <laughs> all have their funny shaped heads and the same exact hairdo for mom and you know the you know drawing straight uh figures with the arms on the side and everything but and that the, m shape for a bird in the sky yeah <laughs> The sun in the corner, always. The <laughs> corner. And, and for some reason, there are some kids who are pushed to continue their artistic practice because it's, you know, their parents say, hey, this is really great. And then there are some people who maybe just don't say anything or don't encourage it or maybe have some sort of disdain for art. And I think it sometimes uh, keeps people from pursuing their dreams. And I've heard several stories where people just stop because they weren't encouraged to do it which i think is really unfortunate mm -hmm. yeah i agree and it's funny that we've got people hopping left and right in the comments about their thoughts of it um and this one's actually an interesting topic with the ones of prodigy people are really really good at a very young age which i guess is a point for being born with an innate talent perhaps uh that art is a skill that is learned if you think you're born with the skill you would be a prodigy and I kind of feel that because especially being in more of a teaching position now, seeing young kids in high school that are above and beyond where I was at in high school, it's like, holy smokes, like, how did you do that? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I am still very much inclined to think that even if you have something that you're born with, that it's the progression beyond that is skill mm -hmm. based. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I make the comparison to uh, Michael Jackson often because when he was a kid, mm. everyone knew he could sing. Like there was no doubt in anyone's mind, this kid can sing just naturally. He's really good. But he also spent hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours rehearsing with his family and getting to be to the quality that he was at by the time he was 11 or 12. And so I think that you can always be you know born with something, but you have to add that practice and that skill. And um, there's a quote that often rings my mind. I don't know if, uh, I don't know who said it, I can't remember. Maybe someone in the comments can help me out, but the quote is, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. <laughs> I love that quote. That, yeah. That's like my, been my entire college experience, honestly. Dude, 100%. It's funny, there's, th this comment has a, idea too that they believe some people do have a biological leg up and ability to see or understand shape or color but it still needs to be developed and even someone without that can develop it to a mastery and it's funny like if i can get nerdy for a second it yeah. reminds me of like any time playing like skyrim or a role-playing game where there's like you can start with like a natural boost in say magic ability but you could go like a melee route 
And it's like, I think that, yeah, that there's so little that's dependent on who you are when you're born and so much that's dependent on what your interest is and what you choose to pursue. Yeah, you know, that, that actually makes me think of a couple of my classmates. Um, I have one friend of mine. We actually did a, I actually did a live stream with him a few years ago when we were still um, doing those on Instagram. And uh, he was not encouraged to do art by his family. He had a whole different route in sports, actually, and just decided, you know, late 20s, like, you know, I want to be a concept artist. And his skill level, and he knows this, was not very high up there. He had a <laughs> lot of legwork he needed to do. and. When I tell you this per this man has worked harder than anyone else I've ever seen in my life, to for him to jump to the skill level that he's at now is almost it's insane. Like no one, none of us can understand it, understand it, teachers or students. And to see where he jumped is like that can only be the effort and the work and the hours he put in. And people who are willing to put in all those hours, I have so much respect for that because you are trying to uh, obtain a dream and you go for it. Yeah. There was, um, let's see, uh, Blighted Angel kind of echoes that idea where as an adult, I feel like when someone compliments me with you're so talented, it feels like they're disregarding the years I've spent developing the skills. It isn't magic. That reminds me, one of my favorite like <laughs> contemporary like Instagram cartoonist, uh, Sarah Doodles, like it was one of like a, a, someone comes up, it's like, you're so good at drawing. It's like, thanks, I practice. It's like, I wonder how you got to be so good practice <laughs> yeah like it's i recognize that one yeah 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 you know that brings up a really good question actually so do you think the idea of of natural talent or being born with this specific talent can actually be damaging to an artist in some way i think so um for me personally i think of in my high school experience i was the art kid in high school and if you look at the growth I had in those four years, it was just a thin, flat line. And the growth in my artistic development came when I hit in an art school and really opened my eyes to the broader community. And I was challenged for really the first time artistically. Um, I think that with as a in a high school setting, I thought that I was very talented, so I didn't need to work on it. And it bred a really habit of laziness. Yeah, that goes back to the quote that I was saying, hard work beats talent and talent <laughs> work hard. And exactly. And I think it can be really destructive for a lot of people because it's very it's very easy for us to not put in a whole lot of effort into something. It's very easy for us to be stagnant and just, you know, kind of rest on our laurels in a way. And when we don't put forth that effort to actively pursue artistic growth or growth in anything, whether it's exercise, whether it's you know, learning a, a sport or an instrument, whatever the case may be, you have to put that in because otherwise you're not going to get very far just real, just um, just settling back on everything that you think you know. And mm -hmm. most times uh, there's a lot of things that are actually, we, we, we have a lot of things in our minds that we think are correct, but are actually big mistakes. And you end up having to unlearn that if you want to grow a lot of times. Absolutely. There's. It's funny. This um, simple Triscoll. Her comment brings up a question, uh, like that they were discouraged for a long time because they thought it was a talent and didn't realize you'd have to make bad art for a while. And when I think of not only for myself but other like kids in the similar setting that I was in, where they think that their work is the best work, they don't experiment, and I didn't play around and try new things and intentionally mess up for the sake of trying something new. Mm -hmm. and, and what do you think about that, that idea of a part of honing a skill is to try and fail? Yeah, you know, if you don't fail at something, you're not gonna learn it. Like if you're, if you're trying to learn how to ride a bicycle, most kids don't get it on the first try. I know I certainly didn't. I got a couple of bruises that I still have on my knees from <laughs> Right the first time, you know, and the, it's the same with everything else. And I don't know why it's specifically art where people don't feel like you have to put in the skill in order to be, or put in the hard work to be good at it. It seems like everything else, like you're you're an engineer. Oh, you must have worked and studied so hard for that. Oh, doctor. Oh man, I know you got must have had so many late nights. Artist. Oh, you're just born with it, so you can just. <laughs> and there's this thing that my friend told me about called the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is the idea that 
you're you think you better you're better than you actually are at something just to put it simply and there's a lot of people who struggle with that very idea and they think and they don't realize how much they need to experiment and grow yeah absolutely and it's it's amazing how that can work there um but thank you so much simple trisco by the way for the uh ten dollar super chat dude yeah and thanks on that note guys like yeah we're all doing this out of a passion and we're purely donation based. So thank you so much, everyone. Every little bit means so much to us. Um, and there was, um, let's see, from the other corner, we have this comment saying that uh, from Blue Wolf Spirit, hard work will take you far, but if you don't have that special something, you will never be Da Vinci, no matter how hard you work. You will, however, be really good and successful. I think that's a really interesting point too, because it, I don't know, maybe it's just the mention of Da Vinci, where when you think of periods like that, the Italian Renaissance, where there were so many talented artists, and yet there were still those like Da Vinci, where they just went above and beyond. What do you think about that concept? You know, Da Vinci is one of those guys that I respect so much, and I hate him so much at the same time, because of how <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember one time I went to his Wikipedia page, and I just looked at the description of what he was, and it listed like 30 things. And it's like, he was a mathematician, he was a you know architect, he was an anatomist, he was a bit, and I was like, goodness, like, go away, Da Vinci. <laughs> you know, and you know, I think what Blue Wolf Spirit is saying here, there, there's, there are times where you do have that special someone who is just, exponentially better than everyone in their circle. Da Vinci is a perfect example of that. And I will, you know, I wish I was one of those people. I really do sometimes, but <laughs> that's not everyone's calling. But the thing is, I think that uh, that it's still worth pursuing if, if you really have this dream to be an artist. And I don't think that the idea that, you know, just because this person's be way better than me or I'll never be as good as them should stop someone from trying to learn how to improve. Yeah. And in a, in a funny way, maybe just because it's comics and it really clicks with me, uh, this recent comment by uh, uh, Blighte De uh, Dangel um, talking about Far Side versus Bill Watterson, Calvin, and Hobbes. It's like, yeah, both were successful comics, but Watterson was by far the superior artist. But Far Side is incredible. And yeah, it kind of speaks to that point of you don't need to be the best. You don't need to be the Da Vinci to be a phenomenal artist. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too is, you know, we're comparing these two comics, but there's also the idea of just taste, right? Like there, there's different, like Clara and I, for example, we have very different tastes in terms of the art that we like, and that's totally mm -hmm. okay. And sometimes the art that you're trying to create is not what someone's going to be interested in. And that's just that's just the reality of things. Not everyone likes the same genre of music. Not everyone likes the same sport. Not everyone likes the same food. And it's the same thing with art. So that's the other thing to think about is how many categories there really are. It's mm -hmm. not just illustration. It's not just painting. There's so many other things that you can learn and grow at and excel at. There was a great phrase that picked up in school where someone said, like, find your tribe. And I, I really click with that where, I mean, yeah, because I mean, any major art movement when cubism came out, everyone thought it was garbage. And even in contemporary fields right now, if you have a portfolio of a bunch of dragons and knights in armor, then you bring it to a New York gallery, they're going to laugh you out the door. But if you bring that over to Magic Studios or Wizards of the Coast, they're gonna give you jobs left and right. So it just depends on your tribe and where you wanna go with that. Yeah, exactly. And I think I think the sooner someone recognizes that they wanna go in a specific direction, the better it is for them. And you know, one of the other things that I wanted to mention about the question is uh, having a natural talent damaging to an artist is, I think sometimes it can actually discourage people uh, who are maybe starting art later in life. Like there are plenty of people who are watching art prop, maybe even right now, who are maybe in their 40s or 50s, never really did art, but it's just something they've always had, you know, felt attracted to in a sense. And there's so many people who go like, oh, well, I wasn't born with that talent like you, so I can never do this. And there's so many people who just kind of turn it away simply because of that false idea, that myth. And I think it's really, really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think we need to start like lauding those stories of the people that 
And again, this is one of those examples you mentioned before of with athletes, engineers, doctors, we love telling that narrative culturally of the long journey and it took so long and oh, how many years of school did it take to do that? But then with art, it's that, especially that idolization of the young prodigy of like, oh, this kid was 12 years old and was in a gallery. And that's not just inaccurate, but it's very demoralizing to people, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I remember hearing something about Picasso being a master draftsman by the time he was like 15 or something like that. And to mm -hmm. the average person that's, and even to me, it's, it's very intimidating, but you gotta think, his dad also trained him, <laughs> you know, like yeah. <laughs> there's some who get that hardcore training early on. Um, there are some people who are six and seven and they go, I want to do this. And that's that. And you have to deal with it. And, sure. yeah. you, know, you know, obviously some people have quite a decent head start when it comes to trying art, you know? Yeah. It's funny. There's a, another comment by a simple Triscoll that's really great. I think that I think there are different skills to have too: storytelling, anatomy, the ability to depict form and volume. There are different skill sets and different ways to be great at art. And this is just something you and I were talking about a little before the stream, where not every artist has to be everything. And I do think that in my experience with artists, there are some that are just I. In this topic, I don't want to say naturally, but just <laughs> naturally good at color or naturally excellent at pointing out flaws in composition. What do you think about that? That thing where the skill of art might not be inherent, but that certain eye for specific details. You know, that I, I think that there is an element of that. There are some people who may not be able to uh, may, may not be able to write a song or something like that, but they know what a good song sounds like. Uh, or mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, or, or there's the story of Beethoven, Beethoven, who was deaf and he still wrote all these amazing symphonies, you know? And uh, I think that there are some people who are stronger in one area than the other. And I think that they should use that to their advantage whenever they can. Uh, some people can't, or maybe don't understand color as well, but maybe they understand chiaroscuro and the idea of like very strong black and white values and their work and they come up with amazing compositions and and they can hand off to someone else to help them finish it um mm -hmm. i mean some people are like that with writing too some you know there are artists who draw their comics or something but maybe they're not the best writers and they team up with people i don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah totally it hits to i mean even with comics the idea of like the penciler and then the anchor and i remember some of my times in art school where uh, professors would say that I was really good at making tangents in compositions and it was just like a flaw that I had and there were other students who were just like so good at making the space seem very believable and yeah so I, I can see that how maybe it's not like talent is the wrong word for it. maybe it's just like that thing of some what you notice what you perceive and kind of that broader purpose of art really to translate what the world looks like to you yeah I, I would even argue that art is a very psychological, um, uh, what do you call it? It's a very psychological subject because there's a lot of things that affect us personally at a deep level, shape, color, value, line, and whatever other tools you can think of for the artist. And those all have a very significant impact on how we see things. And I think that's why people are in awe of people like Tim Burton, who's just very, who's got this weird kind of quirkiness to his work, but you recognize it and you understand where he's coming from, even though it may not be your specific vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I realized how poorly I mispronounced the username before. It's simply Blighted Angel. <laughs> <laughs> I think at first I said Blighted Dongel. Uh, <laughs> So Blite Dongel says, what do we do now? How can we artists impress upon the uneducated majority that being able to draw isn't an innate magical ability? And that's that kind of hits to the tragic real world examples of people wanting work for free or things like that, where it's like, oh, if you just, if this is what you do in your spare time, if you're so good at it, why should I pay you? <laughs> and it's that's exactly it. It's getting that word out there that no, this is not a magical thing we create. Um, as uh, this comment made me laugh about, oh, a magical art fairy that leaves talent under your pillow when you put your paintbrush there. <laughs> so awesome. I yeah, would so, 
bones if, it, if, it, if there was a magic <laughs> art fairy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. With that that earlier thought of like, how do, have you ever had moments like that where it's almost professionally career wise been a problem in kind of translating to clients like, oh no, this is this is work. Do you have experience with that? Yeah, usually it it shows itself in how low someone's budget is. And when I say, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the low budget, but the fact that they want me to undersell myself. And there have been several times where I'll go like, yeah, this work for, you know, all the stuff that you want to do is worth this much. And they're like, oh, I thought, I thought it would have been like a quarter of that. I'm like, what makes you think that just because I like to draw and I happen to be pretty <laughs> good that I don't need to pay bills and eat. I don't understand I don't understand that correlation <laughs> between just because I'm better at it <laughs> makes me not need sustenance, you know? And um it's it's actually very insulting because I put so many hours into my work. I've had so many sleepless nights. I've had wrist pain before. I've mm -hmm. had frustration where, you know, I just want to scream. And there are those times. And I know a lot of other artists who deal with the same thing. And I think when people don't recognize that it's almost like they're diminishing all the time and effort we put into it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on the note of the wrist pain, one of these days we got to do an art prof, like jazzercise video of carpal tunnel exercises, because oh, yeah. that would be, uh, it's necessary. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I feel that. There's, whoop. Moon Sparks says, uh, I think some people are born with a certain talent, but as time progresses, the certain person hones in with different skills they pick up along the line. And that's kind of kind of what you were talking about earlier, where you can have that natural thing that draws you to it, but it's all about how you develop it and how you build it to go further, which kind of speaks, I think, to that different realms of careers that you can pursue with art and whether you make it professional or a personal journey. Um, and I think this applies regardless of whether you're going into the professional field or if you just make your art for yourself and you don't show anyone. It's It still takes that practice and work to get it to where you want it to be. Yeah, exactly. Art doesn't have a finish line. I think that's what a lot of people might secretly assume, that there's a point where you go like, I've made it, I've finished my artistic growth and I don't need to learn anything else. And I remember one of my favorite painters, his name is Nathan Fowkes. He, um, he's a background painter and he worked on films like The Prince of Egypt and The Road to El Dorado, really great artist. But he said what he does is he does, he focuses on fundamentals literally every single day. And he reviews the same books over and over again about light and cast shadow and color theory and all this stuff that is, te is technically very, very basic, but it's what propelled him to become the master artist that he is. And he's like, I, there's still so much I have to learn. And I find that the best artists tend to be the most humble. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, um, I think of that on like the, in the daily sketch days, if I just wake up and start working on my project, it's kind of stiff and unmoving. But if I take the time to, similar to a morning cup of coffee, do like 10, 15 minutes of warm up sketches from life or something, I feel so much more loose and it's it reminds you how much it is a skill like exercise you can't just start running you have to stretch or else you get a muscle cramp i feel right. like it's the same thing yeah exactly this is bringing up a really uh i think realistic roadblock people fit uh mary sanchez is saying i think that a big issue for adults and people who want to get into art is managing time and expectation how to take time out of your day for art and not get frustrated by so slow progress because that's the thing of if what we're all saying is true that it that skill that you build up is there that is another kind of challenge you'll face is you'll put in so much work and so much effort and the growth is so slow yeah that <laughs> that's so difficult but it's also inevitable and you know what i what i personally think might even prolong that process is some people just don't know how to practice um, I've, I've, I heard one artist say, it's not practice makes perfect, it's make perfect, perfect practice. And there are some times where you're, you're working on something and in the big picture, it's really not doing all that much to grow your, you know, advance in your skill level. And so, but for example, I talk about the 2500 challenge a lot in the discord and you guys have probably heard me in previous streams mention it. And one of the reasons I say, 
keep the sketches shorter is so that you're not spending seven, eight hours doing one drawing. And that, that you know, final seven, eight hour drawing has def definitely has its place in practicing. But if you're just at the beginning level and you don't know how to draw ahead or something like that, then it might be better to just do these really quickly because over time you'll get so much better and so much faster. Um, just one example of doing something like that. Mm -hmm. This is, there's a funny add-on point that Helen Dang is bringing up to that previous comment of sometimes I find it hard to know if I should do art or not since I'm being judged and compared to a lot. It makes me confused if it's a talent, skill, or both. And I think that idea of the external judgment, the reason I want to bring it up is because of in this day and age where it's like, oh, if you do art, it's like, oh, you should make an Instagram, you should share that art. And I think that that puts on a lot of potentially unnecessary pressure. If you're just getting started, that skill that, I'm sorry, I misspoke there, that gift that people a couple generations ago had where you could isolate yourself in a cave metaphorically and just hone the craft. You didn't have to show every step of the journey, despite how inspiring that might be for others. If you don't need to show that, don't show it. What do you what do you think about like that ease of translating your art today? Yeah. So first of all, I never show my bad sketches on social media. <laughs> I don't do that. I'm just gonna make me feel bad about myself and someone's gonna message me privately and say, Why does your drawing suck? You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. I have one or two people like say something like that before trying to help me. So yeah. Dude, absolutely. Yeah. It's a uh, blue wolf spirit is saying, uh, other people's opinion is none of your business. Don't, don't worry about being judged. Just create. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it, the other thing too, is you don't have to sell your art <laughs> that you're creating. Some of us do that for a living. That's just what we do. But if you're just trying to learn how to draw and paint and sculpt and whatever, who cares if you, you don't sell to anybody? It could just be for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it, it can very well be a career or it could just be a hobby. And depending on the pressures around you, you, you know, there might be, you might have more concern over how fast or how quickly you grow. But I really don't think that should be a huge concern. Uh, just thinking about why am I not at 100? I should you not know, have been working so long. It's going to come with time, with the consistency. Mm hmm I think that is, it's about loving the daily, not just a goal you're going towards. And it's perfect and it's awesome to have a goal that you're reaching for, but that can't be the only thing keeping you to it. I think you have to enjoy that craft. Like Jordan, you've said countless times how you just love your daily work. And it's, that's what, that combined with a goal for the future is what keeps it strong. Exactly. Couldn't have said any better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's what I do, guys. That's it. Let's see. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think this. Oh, this one shows it pretty well. Of um, a portfolio focused on bad sketches. I would. <laughs> I would have the biggest one. It would be. Yeah. It would be full to the brim. <laughs> oh, same here. I have so many bad sketches that none of you guys will ever see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's it's funny because when there's an artist that I really admire that every once in a blue moon on Instagram lets themselves get very vulnerable and show their crappier thumbnail sketches, it's so humbling to see and it's really inspiring. Kind of like what you said a little bit ago in this stream that the best artists you find are the ones that are truly humble about it. Mm -hmm. You actually have a question for you about that. Is there, was there a time in school or maybe in your career where you were working with someone who was so good and just really humble and just frustrated you or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone types of stories. Yeah, like most people like that I went to school with, honestly, like, and it was, it was so funny how it worked out where that, I, it was funny where it's like, you know, that myth of like the 80s sports movie of like the, the jock who's really good at it. He's kind of a jerk. And mm -hmm. then you like, it was the exact opposite. Like the people who were the best at the most talented, <laughs> the best and the most skilled were also so kind, so nice, so sweet. And it was like, ah, oh, I, I can't even be mad at you. <laughs> yeah. Right. They're so, they're so awesome. I have so many teachers like that where they would, they would literally just give us all the things they've learned in the last 20 years in like an hour long lecture. And we just be sitting there taking all these notes like, thank you so much. That saved me. I've been struggling with this and that. And it's always the best thing ever. And 
and I feel so indebted to those artists who who are like that. Oh yeah, there's this is a really good like maybe closely comment to by uh, Anya DC, where sometimes I worry that it takes me too long to make art. I'll work really hard to create my vision and then realize that someone with more skill could have created the same thing faster. And that's, I think for me, the first thing I read out of that is what we talked about earlier in the stream of like when you're growing and building a skill, you make bad art. And the sign that you finish a piece and then see all the things that could have been improved on it is that's your brain growing. That's your skill improving. What do you think about that concept? Yeah, you know, I think that there's there's often two tracks when it comes to art. Um, what we can produce, you know, physically, and you know, the drawing, the painting, whatever, and what our eye sees. And oftentimes, our what our eye sees is higher up than what we can produce. So we have a better eye for things than we than we draw. So that's why all our drawings to us look bad. But then there's those times where it switches and suddenly your drawing is much better than you could have pictured. And you're like, I am a boss. Like this is amazing. <laughs> Let me go show your mom and you hang it up on the fridge and post it on social media and whatever. And those, you know, those times don't happen very often, but they do happen. And so, oh, yeah. and so I think that recognizing that when you're going, as long as you're going on a steady incline, you are really in a good spot. You know, there's, there's so many, bad drawings that I've produced. If I could, I would show you guys all the stuff I have in my desk right now. And if I get to one of those bad drawings, I just put it in the drawer and don't look at it anymore. And oh, just, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's just a drawing. It's just a painting. That's, it's really not that in depth. I love what I do, but it's not meant to be that crazy. Yeah. And it's, it's funny, like the being a practicing artist, it's like, I remember growing up with these thoughts of like, you know, my my parents who weren't artists saying things like, oh yeah, like every piece of paper that like Michelangelo touched was perfect. They're all beautiful. And now as a practicing artist, I realize like, no, he just threw away the bad ones. <laughs> like, yeah. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, it's it's one of those battles that is going to be hard to escape. Uh, but that's just the artist's journey. That's just the path that we take. <laughs> There's not. <laughs> Uh, to, to change that. But um, anyway, guys, we want to thank you so much for watching. And for those of you who are new, or, um, check out our Spotify playlist where we have our, our podcast where we give lots of art talks and advice. And let's see, let me switch the slide here. We also are on iTunes. So please listen, leave us a rating and review. And in about five to 10 minutes after the stream, Alex and I will be on the Discord. Link is in the description below. And we'll be in the post live streams channel. And you could ask us whatever questions that we didn't get to in the stream. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications for our future streams because we have a lot more coming. And finally, last but not least, we want to thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, all you guys who have been helping us over the years. We really, really appreciate it. And we can't produce our prof without your support. So thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts. And we will see you next time. Take care, everyone.